was a bit repetitive. It was a lot of the same thing. That's what repetitive means, Jan. Idiot. And curse, curse. Ugh. everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my April wrap up for 2021 part 2. I read a total of 20 books this month so I'm splitting this up into four different parts. I will link the other wrap up videos down below once they're uploaded for you guys to check out if you're interested in the other 15 books that I read this month but here are the next five so without further ado let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about is The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved it. This follows a woman named Kristen who is planning her best friend's wedding. She meets the best man, Josh, and they instantly take a liking to each other. They start hanging out a lot and Kristen discovers that he wants a big family. The only problem is that Kristen has a medical condition that causes having children to be very, very difficult. So Kristen decides that she can't ever be with Josh even though she really wants to be and it's like the story of that. Like I said, I really enjoyed this. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I loved the chemistry between Kristen and Josh. I think that they were so funny together. The banter and how sassy and witty they are just had me laughing out loud multiple times. Right from their very first meeting I was so invested on these two being together. I don't even know if this would be classified as an enemies to lovers so I'm going to classify it as like an enemies to friends to lovers romance because I don't know what it actually is. I really liked Josh as a character. He is just so pure and just a little cinnamon roll and I just want to love him with my whole heart. Kristen was very frustrating to me. I just wish that she had communicated with Josh even a tiny bit because that would have solved literally all of their problems. But I did really like their journey throughout the story. I liked watching their relationship grow as it progressed. There were some twists and turns that I did not see coming which totally broke my heart and I am devastated by. I don't really know how I feel about the ending of this book. I do really like how it ended because I loved their relationship so much so I'm very happy with how it ended but I do think that it may be a little bit insensitive and I just feel kind of iffy about it but the author did put an author's note at the end stating that this story was based off of her friend's infertility issues so that kind of cleared it up a little bit but I don't know I'm still not 100% like sold on the ending but I still really liked it so... 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is A Noise Downstairs by Linwood Barclay. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. It was like a super average thriller. It follows Paul Davis who 8 months ago witnessed a crime committed by a co-worker that left him changed forever. He is now suffering from PTSD and memory loss so his wife decides to buy him an old typewriter in the hopes of jogging his memories if he writes his story down. He begins to hear the clicking of the typewriter keys in the middle of the night and he believes that the two women who his colleague murdered that night are trying to communicate with him and it's like the story of that. This was my second Linwood Barclay book and I had pretty similar feelings towards this one that I did with the other one. I don't think that it was anything special but it was still fun to read. The pacing at the beginning of the book was rather slow and it did take a while for things to pick up in the story. I also was able to call a lot of the twists and turns in this but that could also just be because I've read so many thrillers at this point that I just find it easy to do so. But there were some twists that I didn't see coming so that made it a little bit more enjoyable. There were quite a few side plots that you needed to follow which I honestly just didn't care about. Like for example Anna, Paul's therapist had a side plot and I just did not care but one of Anna's patients Gavin had a side plot as well which I was really invested in so it was kind of like a give or take kind of situation for me but overall like it was an average thriller I think a lot of people will enjoy it I think I've just read so many thrillers at this point that I just it's like all the other ones so three out of five stars the next book I have is if I never met you by Mary McFarlane I gave this a three out of five stars it follows Lori and her long-term boyfriend of 18 years who just unexpectedly broke things off with her when word travels around their office that her ex got another woman pregnant Lori is not sure how to handle it and how to move forward enter office playboy Jamie Carter who needs a stable girlfriend in order to impress the bosses a chance encounter in a broken elevator causes Jamie to propose the idea that they begin to fake date. 
So they begin to flaunt their relationship on social media and in the office, and the lines between real and fake start to blend together, and it's the story of that. I'm personally a huge sucker for the fake dating trope, so I was really excited about this one, but I don't think that it was anything like super special or memorable. It was just another average romance story. I really liked Jamie as a character. I was expecting like a huge asshole character, but he was the complete opposite, which I was not expecting and actually really enjoyed. I also really liked Lori as a character. I liked watching her grow and come into herself as the story progressed, but I did not get any chemistry between them. I just was not feeling it. It was just very lackluster and I think that I was expecting like a rom-com, which this definitely wasn't. There was a lot of deeper topics being explored that I just wasn't aware of going into it. There were some funny lines sprinkled within the book, but it was more of an emotionally driven book, which I wasn't expecting. So overall, it was okay, but it just wasn't anything over the top for me. So three out of five stars. The next book I have is The Walt City by Ryan Grodin. I gave this a three out of five stars. The book follows Jin, Mei Yi, and Dai, who are stuck in the Walled City, which is run by crime lords, fueled by drugs and brothels. Jin has been masquerading as a boy, looking for her long lost sister for a very long time so when Dai gives her the opportunity to enter the last brothel that she needs to search in order to complete her rounds of trying to find her sister she jumps on the chance and it's that story. This book was so slow at the beginning so it took me a very long time to get invested in it. There was a couple of times where I just thought that I was going to put the book down because it was taking so long for anything to actually happen. Once the action did come I was invested in the story and the characters but that wasn't until the last like third of the book so it was just a long time to wait for anything to actually happen. This is told from the three characters points of views so I did like reading from each of them but they all had very similar voices so it wasn't really that easy to distinguish who was who other than it saying like this is the point of view you're reading from but they all sounded the same so it was kind of disappointing. I will say that Dai was my favorite character just because he had the most mystery behind the reason he was in the walled city but overall it was just way too slow for my liking. I know that a lot of people do rate this book pretty highly so don't take my word as like the gospel truth. Try it out for yourself maybe you'll enjoy it. it just wasn't for me so three out of five stars and then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. I gave this a 4.5 out of five stars. This one was a lot of fun. This follows Grace and Jack who seem to have the perfect marriage. Jack is a successful lawyer protecting battered women and Grace is the ideal wife but looks can be deceiving and when those you love are in danger you will stop at nothing in order to protect them and it's like the story of that. I was so invested in this story and these characters I just needed to know what was happening and what was going to happen next so I ended up reading this book in one sitting. It was just so fast paced. The story is told in alternating timelines from the past and the present and I was so invested in trying to figure out how in the heck Grace got herself in the predicament that she was in. Jack was such an interesting character to me. I loved reading about him and learning more about his backstory. I knew where the story was going to lead with Jack, but I was so invested in trying to figure out how they got there. Like I said with Grace, how the heck did you get in that predicament? I also really liked Grace as a character. Even though she got into that messy situation, she was actually very smart and was able to like fight for lack of a better word, back. I absolutely adored Millie. She was probably my favorite character. She was just such a little sweetheart and I just wanted to hug her all the time. I did end up dropping half a star just because the story was rather repetitive and it kind of got annoying after a time, but that ending though, the final line, packed a punch and I was so here for it. I just really enjoyed it. I think that it would make a really interesting movie. So like producers, like hit up BA Paris because I would watch the shit out of that movie. But yeah, 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was really good. Definitely recommend if you like thrillers, check this one out. Alright everybody, so that was my part 2 of 4 wrap up for April 2021. I will leave the links for the other ones down below when they're all uploaded, so check them out if you're interested in the other 15 books that I read. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!